All right, we are returning after our Thanksgiving break to our digital painting assignment. So I'm going to go under assignments, scroll down to assignment seven, where we post it. And I was working with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, had lots of different references, right? And then we're doing it in Photo P, our freeware version of Photoshop. And I'm going to open up that PSD file that I've been working on. And then I'm also going to open up my primary reference. If there's like a hero reference you have, I just like to have that open in preview. I'll stick it off to the side there. Now, in Photopea, I have a tablet plugged in so that I can use pressure sensitivity. You want to always test your brush. And notice that because I'm not logged into PhotoP, I don't have a custom brush anymore after I've closed in and reopened it. So at any time, you can make a new custom brush, or you can just use the ones that are in it. I like this one, which is their round, noisy marker. But you want to understand how to modify it, and that's all under brush settings. So under tip dynamics, I'm going to set the control to pin pressure. That allows me to go thick to thin. And the harder I press, the more opaque it is as well. So that's the only modification really I've made. I can play with the jitter of the roundness. It's size jitter a little bit maybe. But this is more for refined painting like I've been doing. And you set up your file. We're doing 11 by 14 inches at 350 pixels per inch. So that we spend all this time digitally painting. We're going to get something that gives us a nice, a nice printout at the end. But right now it still just looks like a lot of pixels layered on top of each other. And the more and more I paint, I was showing you how you can use the, the smudge tool, right, to kind of blend. I'm just going to keep building with refined paint. And I could do it on just limited layers, or I can lock all of these layers and create a new refined paint layer on top. Okay, so it's a pretty simple process. We do over and over again. I like to have the navigator turned on under Window, Navigator. You'll see it here as a little compass. And I like to steal colors from my different references and also be looking at my hero reference here to know kind of what shapes, what tones, I'm playing with, and I don't want to be afraid of color throughout the process. Without my base color, this is what my refined color looks like, or my refined paint. And so obviously I need to cover a lot more of it to bring everything up to the same kind of level. And so that will be my first task. Not to get stuck in any area of detail. but instead to try to bring everything up to the same basic handling before I move on. I can make my brush a little bit bigger. I can take my opacity down 60 or 70 so that I'm mixing colors as I go. And I'm just staying on the brush tool. Oh, 
How did that opacity get so high? There we go. That's more what I want. So I'm stealing a lot of colors just from myself. And I'm trying to, as I've been saying the last videos before the break, I try to use the direction of my paint strokes to describe the surface of the subject matter I'm painting. So in this case, the face, I try to flow the brush strokes along the, the shape of the face. And you do not need to be a slave to your photo reference. It's one of the reasons I don't recommend rotoscoping on your refined paint. Only do that for a sketch layer. So for instance, I don't want to show the mouth open because I know from experience that like digitally painting teeth takes a lot of time and nuance that I don't really want to have to deal with. And I think I can get the same kind of impression, maybe even a better impression, having her lips just kind of gently together. And I can also upturn her lips as I've done slightly to change her expression so that she's smiling a little bit. Always nice. And then I'm not using my eraser at all. Instead, when I want to replace something that's there, I just find a new color to paint over it. And by using a lower opacity, brush in these refined paint layers that mixes all of the colors that are underneath. Blends in with them. So whether you make your own brush or you use the existing brushes, just make sure you play with the brush dynamics so that it's predictable in the way you're using it. And we're working to build up a very interesting kind of paint film so that when we zoom in on it, it doesn't just look like pixels layered on top of each other. It starts to have some nuance and complexity to it, like it does on the inside of the nose here. And that takes this low opacity kind of layering of different colors. You can see the base color coming through, and that's where it's more boring. And then the navigator is nice because you can always see the whole picture there. Kind of see where you are in the, the big picture of everything. And I'm zoomed in at 100%, which means these are the, the pixels that will actually print that you can see with your eye looking at a print. I'll sometimes even go into 200% because I still want that to be kind of a satisfying, by the end, a satisfying surface. It doesn't look too generic. But going in any more than that just makes it unnecessary. And we're not necessarily going for photorealism here. You can do it in any style you want. But I do want you to understand the difference between base painting and refined painting. Low opacity brushes and high opacity brushes. 
and how we work from basic to more specific, or from general shapes and colors to more specific shapes and colors. Yeah, I'm wearing a mask today because I got got a cold from my kids. <laughs> so there are, there are colds going around. It's a terrible time to uh, to get sick in the semester. So do the best you can to get your sleep, keep yourself healthy, so we can finish strong. Now I get seduced into doing little details like around the eye because they're a lot of fun. But this reminds me there's a lot I need to do that I haven't even touched the refined paint for yet. So you got to sometimes move around to places that aren't as much fun. And that's more of kind of just the discipline of painting. so that we get everything kind of treated equally. Otherwise, what our audience notices are the, the weakest parts. So I'm just using the brush tool and just hovering with my left hand over the option key. Just to steal colors. And because they're at a lower opacity on my refined paint, whatever I paint automatically blends with what's underneath it. And I can keep choosing colors until it blends completely. So I'll even intentionally throw some off colors into there, like these fluorescent greens and things, so that it makes me go and clean those up. And it adds some complexity to my color. I'm using a a technique of, of modeling called hatching, so lots of linear directional marks. So I try to keep that direction going with the face. I'm using warm colors and cool, cool colors overlapping each other. And it has to do with some of my influences, right? Like these kind of strong color combinations. If you want to make your navigator a little bit smaller, oh, I wish you could, you can click just on your browser and then shrink those tools with command minus. So you have more area for the painting and more area to steal from your references or take colors from your references. It's not quite stealing. We've been at this for quite a while already. Just takes time to build up that surface. But you'll get to places, like I think I've gotten to it on the underside of the eye here, where you've kind of hit upon the level of finish that you want. And now you're just trying to bring everything else up to that level. <clears throat> 